Well, welcome back. 2000 Ford Focus single overhead cam uh, alternator. I'm going to do a couple of quick checks here, but basically I got called somebody I know. They stopped somewhere, went to start, got nothing. Uh, went out, looked at it, battery was 5 volts. Um, was able to jump it without any problem, but of course, as soon as I disconnected uh, the jump from it, died right off. Automator was not producing anything. Um, had the battery, pulled the battery, charged it overnight, had it checked, it's fine, load tested it, battery's fine. Uh, I'm going to do some voltage drop testing on this, uh, maybe some scope testing, and uh, we're going to replace the alternator in this. All right, we'll just do a quick check, try to get this in here where you can see it. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, we're just going to do voltage. 14.5, so the alternator's charging right now. Without it on, I checked that it, it was 12.8. I know that it was not charging before uh, at all. So I'm gonna do a couple voltage drop tests. Just gonna go from the uh, positive battery to the stud at the, on the back of the alternator where the uh, battery cable connects to, not on the wire itself, but on the stud. I wanna see how much voltage drop we get there. Make sure we don't have a wiring issue. Like, uh, come on, give me a decent video. Something good here. 70, 40 millivolts. It's fine, no problem. Now do the same thing. I'll go from the negative battery terminal to the case of the alternator. Decent connection here. We have 9, 10 millivolts. So we don't have a, a, a voltage drop problem, a problem in the wiring. And I know this alternator is charging right now, but I also know that it's probably not going to continue that way. It's, it's, uh, I've seen it where the battery lights come on in this before, uh, temporarily. And I'm guessing when this gets hot, it stops uh, charging and that's what killed the battery because the battery checks out okay, wiring checks out okay. Right. And I get this on later out of here. There's two bolts at the top, one at the bottom. I believe you can get it out if you have to take these fans out. These fans just have a clip up top. I'll show it to you when I get it. It's kind of hard to show it to you, but uh, I should be able to just pop them loose. Uh, before I do that, you're going to have to take the electrical connectors off of here. There's an O2 sensor that's clipped in. Uh, there's uh, push pins and there's a couple of fan connectors that need to be undone. I've got to figure them out. Um, I believe I can see that. Let me get a screwdriver. I'm going to clip this side. I'll show it to you when I get it out of here because I'm really trying to show you the clip. It's, it's uh, a little tough. This one, this one is hard for me to see. Got the clips out. Now I should be able to use it. I might have to take this off right here. Get this out of my way. I think I'm going to have to. Push pins here. There it goes. Just fell down on me. I believe this just wiggles off out of the way here. Come on. Slide this whole thing out of there. Well, of course, there's something clipped to the bottom of it. Of course. See if there's anything else. Probably. There's probably one more thing clipped to it somewhere.
who's got a hold of me? Somebody got a hold of me here. Nobody. All right. All right, so that's out. Let me see if I can show you. I'll zoom you in here. So this clip right here, that slides down into a, right in here, and just has a lock, almost like an electrical connector lock, and it clips over the front. You just got to pry that out, one on either side at the top, and then lift the whole thing up, and it slides out. So, not hard, but a little cumbersome. Oh my. Let's try that again. Let me get this out of the way. You can see, so some of these could have stayed in place. You just plug them back in now. Since uh, these two could have stayed put. These two could have stayed put as well. Looks like. Set that aside. Uh, I'm gonna disconnect the negative on the battery. Make sure you do that before you start messing with the uh, alternator. It's like a Christmas tree for electrical connector. Want this guy right here. I want to do that. Uh, I want to plug the electrical connector to the side of the alternator. All right, so it's three wire. I don't know if you can see this or not, but there's a red. A blue and a gray. The red's going to be 12 volt power all the time. Uh, the gray, I think, is the monitor. One's a communication line from the ECM. One's a monitor line back to the ECM from the alternator. Um, you should always have 12 volts on the red line. If you don't have a scope or a really, you know, higher end graphing multimeter, you're not going to be able to see it. I look at this on a scope, but I realize that most people don't have a scope. Uh, to check to make sure it was actually the ECM was controlling it and um, the monitor line was was talking back so and it was I just don't do that all right so I've got that line up we'll just set that up like that we have to get the I think that's a 12 but I'm not sure I don't think it's a 10 is it? It could be wrong it's a 10 we have to undo the battery Cable goes from the battery to the alternator. Do that. Okay, there's my cable to my battery. Just set that out of the way for a minute here. Tuck that in. Now I've got three bolts, like I said before. I think they're 12 millimeter. One at the bottom, two at the top. 12 or 13, I'm not sure which it is. I know you can't see this, but I'm just going to loosen the belt and get it off of the alternator pulley. That's the plan. I'm going to look at my belt routing before I do that. My right, top two are loose. I've got one more, I think, down the bottom here. Let me get, a, uh, let me get my mirror and take a look, but I believe there's one more down the bottom. Well, I have a new one. I wanted to take a look at where the holes are. So it's up, it's down underneath, so this goes like this towards the front first one they sent me they literally shipping broke this right off broke the almost the entire mount for the top part of it right off I have to send me another one and I had to order another uh, motor mount because they sent me the wrong one I went and checked the order the order was right and then I look at the part number inside the box and it's not what's supposed to be in the box so that didn't help so it happens all right so where is that thing? It's down here, right? 15 millimeter on the bottom. Huh. Well, hopefully it comes out here pretty easy. Not too much grief. I hope. I want it. Right, so there it is. Now, back to my 13. I finished taking my top two out here. Oh, it's also nice and clean and shiny, too. It's just three bolts. It takes you 20 minutes to half an hour to get to them. Not a shiny one. All right, now the fun part. Hopefully, 
Hopefully we'll be able to snake this out of here. I think so. It's got stuck on the bottom here. Come on. There it goes. Get it off of that stud. Now, maybe around to this side. Oh yeah. I'll just put it down on the floor. Take it out foot on the floor. Probably could come up through here, but it's a whole lot easier with that. I will say it's a whole lot easier with the um, fans out of there. I wouldn't want to do it with the fans in there. It'd be really hard to get at it. All right, there it is. Cruddy. I think this is original. Yeah, Motocraft, 160 thump thousand miles. And it helps if I turn the camera back on. I've got my new one later. I checked it, made sure it matched up to the old one. I put it on the floor and then just kind of pulled it up just like I took the other one out. Wiggled it up into place, got it on the bottom stud. Got my top two started here. Let me get my nut and get that started on the bottom. Bottom's in place. Okay. My battery cable. I'm going to hook that back up right now before I forget. Okay. My electrical connector here. Plug that back in. All right, not too bad. I just gotta pull, plug everything back in. That's it. Now, I have to go back here and put my belt back on, but I'll do that. Reverse of taking it off, no big deal. And then it's hooked back up. Do all the layers in, running. I'm just gonna look, see what we got. 15.1 volts, pretty high coming down a little bit but I'm guessing the battery was a little little drain and that's going to come down and it is coming down a little bit but we'll let it run for a little bit uh, I'm just going to look at some live data There's not much in here for this for this car actually um, probably blind in here right the layer most likely the only thing you really see is battery voltage 14.8 volts 14.7 volts so it's charging well and that's about it I wanted to share some more data in there, but I don't have anything in my scanner for it. Well, that's it for the uh, 2000 Ford Focus single overhead cam alternator replacement. I did find one thing out from the owner when I talked to him after he stopped by after the car was here. They had the car towed here because it left them stranded. Um, wouldn't run at all. Um, the, inter the battery light intermittently was coming on on the dash, which is indic in indicative of alternator issue. So when I got it and it sat and cooled down, charged the battery up, had the battery tested, the battery was five volts when it was here, it was dead. Um, after I let it charge overnight, had it tested, tested out okay, started it up, was charging it, 14 and a half, 14.7 volts, something like that, which would, you know, kind of coincide with intermittently the light was on in the dash. So my guess is that the alternator would get hot and then it would stop charging. Um, and did it enough to strand them. So not a very tough job. Uh, takes a little bit of time, but not bad at all on this on this single overhead cam. Dual overhead cam is different. Alternators on the other side against firewall. A little, little different uh, beast. Uh, if you have this problem with your Ford, I hope it helps you out. If you like the video, subscribe below. Thanks for watching.